Hey buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Kilman is the name, and Hearthstone is the game, and this is my Gadgets and Budget Aggro Hunter deck. When I say budget, that's exactly what I mean. This deck only costs 600 arcane dust to craft, so it's incredibly cheap. It's perfect for new players, beginners, growing players who don't have a huge collection and have just a little bit of dust to work with. Some people call budget decks like 2000 dust. I think that's crazy. This is truly a budget deck. Now that said, it's not designed to carry you all the way to the legend ranks. This deck is perfect from rank 25 to 15, maybe even a little higher if you're patient and persistent and learn the deck and make a few key upgrades here and there. Uh, but it's a great deck to get you started out on the competitive ranked ladder, get you some stars, get you climbing, get some win streaks together and see what you can do as you grow into your collection. It's also an aggro deck, as you'll note from the title. Uh, what that means is just that it tends to get out onto the board very, very quickly uh, with fast early game minions. And in fact, this deck uses those early game minions for a lot of mid-game beast style synergies to do even crazier stuff. So for instance, new cards like the Alley Cat from Mean Streets of Gadgets and this is just a super cheap way to play multiple beasts so that you can do stuff like play Alley Cat on turn one, sacrifice them both on turn two after playing a Scavenging Hyena to get yourself a just a giant scavenging hyena, but also perhaps to set up kill commands or to synergize with a card like Raid Leader, for instance. So there's a few different things. There's even Timberwolves in here to help you give those early game minions additional attack power. So between that early game presence with just cheap beasts like Alley Cat, Direwolf Alpha, River Croc, even Hyena itself, and some of these mid game tools that synergize with those beasts like the kill commands and, <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice, and the Hound Masters and so on and so forth, you can start to pull together some really interesting little combos. Uh, for instance, one of the coolest things I've done in this deck is, you know, your, your opponent has four or five minions out on the board, you play Unleash the Hounds, you drop a Scavenging Hyena, you drop a Timberwolf, for instance, uh, you not only get, you know, four Hounds that are hitting minions for two damage each to help you clear your opponent's board, but each time they die, they're buffing that Scavenging Hyena. So I've had instances where I fought a Token Druid who had a bunch of stuff out. I basically put together something like a, you know, a, I don't remember the exact numbers, but like a 12 damage Scavenging Hyena that just hit him in the face twice and he could never kill it. So there's, there's crazy potential in this deck for plays like that. But there's also just really consistent stuff, like the most boring card ever, River Crocolisk, into Houndmaster. And it just becomes a really strong early game minion that you're able to get out very cheaply, that stuck around, that, that got buffed by Houndmaster and became a thing. Uh, even cards like Dispatch Kodo in this deck, another new one for me in Streets of Gadgets and can do really interesting stuff. Because there's not only hand buffs from Smuggler's Crate, which makes some of these beasts even bigger. You know, getting that 4-4 Direwolf Alpha can be a huge play. Uh, but, you know, landing it on the Dispatch Kodo can be even better. Because suddenly that's a 4-6-4 four, four drop that does 4 damage on its battle cry. So it makes it something like a Fire Elemental for only 4 mana, which is just obscene and super good. Another interaction with Dispatch Kodo that some people might not know about, since this is a battle cry effect with cards like Timberwolf and Direwolf Alpha, if you play uh, Dispatch Kodo in a position on the board, where it would re receive the buff from Direwolf Alpha or just automatically be buffed by Timberwolf. The attack buffs that these active aura cards contribute to Dispatch Kodo actually affect its battle cry. So even if this has not been buffed and you play it next to a Direwolf Alpha, its battle cry is going to do three damage instead of just two. So that's a neat little extra synergy uh, that this deck can do. Also, Raid Leader is another card that enables that. So uh, there's a few different active aura attack buffs that really help with things like Unleash the Hound, your Cheap Beast, even Dispatch Kodo itself. And then finally, this deck just has uh, some raw damage output. As Hunter, one of the things you're always trying to do is not just get out to a fast start and overwhelm your opponents with minions and value, but just do damage. So you've got your hero power for that. You've got kill commands for direct damage. You've also got the card Reckless Rocketeer. It's just five charge damage that will sometimes uh, be the top deck you need to win the game. So a lot of different ways to really hurt your opponents in this deck and, and finish off games essentially. So uh, get out to fast starts. Have a really cool, interesting mid-game curve where you do some cool synergy combo stuff and then just finish the game off with um, unavoidable damage. And that's the, the strategy behind the budget aggro hunter deck. Now, I've been winning a fair bit of games with this deck. It's actually uh, better than I even expected it to be. So let's go ahead and, and, and jump out onto uh, not the ranked ladder just yet because I think this is 
uh, uh, rank five games would be an unfair representation of what this deck is all about. Uh, so we're going to take it out onto the casual ladder to see it in action. I think rank five is just a little too high. Uh, this this deck would get squashed, and frankly, Hunter as a class right now is a little bit squashed on the the higher end competitive Hearthstone ladder. So uh, I think casual mode is going to give us a much more fair representation of of what this deck can do. <coughs> Sorry guys, I'm I'm really losing my voice here. Like Christmas break has uh, <laughs> has uh, taken away my voice and my ability to do videos. Unfortunately, hopefully we'll work through that. Uh, all right, so Warrior is our first matchup here, and you know as we play some games, we'll talk about mulligans, we'll talk about early lines of play that are really important, just general strategies um, to make this deck work. I think that'll give you a really good feel for what the deck can do. Um, so for the mulligan here, we're just going to trash everything. We really, really, really want a one-drop or a two-drop. We're also looking for acidic swamp ooze against the warrior. We want alley cat. We'll even take a river croc since we have the coin. We just need a proactive minion that we can play. Uh, Smuggler's Crate is generally not necessarily bad, simply because uh, it kind of can fill in some mana. Uh, Direwolf Alpha is not the ideal early minion to play. You'd rather this be sort of follow-up. So, this is definitely some sort of pirate warrior. We don't know if it's full pirates, if it's um, uh, going to have some dragon stuff in there. It's hard to tell sometimes. <sighs> so, we have a little bit of a dilemma here. Uh, we could just play the Timberwolf down to absorb a weapon hit. Doesn't feel very compelling. We could coin out the Novice Engineer to draw a card, but I think that's just a little too slow. I think, unfortunately, I kind of have to play the Dire Wolf. Just to absorb some hits here, just to prevent him from going too crazy too soon. It's a really, really unfortunate play, but against this kind of matchup, we're never going to need, like, Dire Wolf Unleash the Hounds. Unleash the Hounds itself will be good, because there's a lot of low health stuff, but often you wouldn't need the combo necessarily. So this is sort of a taunt minion in many ways, just because he feels like he has to kill it. So it could affect his play. Um, oh man, a City Swap Boost would be such a good draw here. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Um, yeah, so <laughs> same story here. We could play the Engineer, but that enables him to kill it with Patches, uh, which is just a little too easy. And then he gets to go three to face. Uh, the real the real problem we have here is that we want to kill this because he's going to be able to Bloodsail Cultist, and there's nothing we can do about it. We, we can't actively kill this, so Bloodsail Cultist makes this a 4-3 weapon, which is just insanely good. Farling Berserker is sort of the same story, but we can perhaps deal with that eventually. Maybe not right away, unless we get a Huffer here. If we roll Huffer, we'll trade. Yeah, we rolled Huffer. So that's a fine trade. It seems unfortunate to just go minion for minion. But remember, they both cost three mana. Uh, his is scarier than ours, so I'm actually content to make that trade. We may have to kill command that. It's just, oh, definitely now. Unless we draw, um, Unleash the Hounds would be a good draw, because we could Timberwolf and trade. <gasps> Dispatch Kodo's an even better draw. Perfect draw. It's so good to have active effects like that. So this might make him compelled to trade. He should, actually, because our Houndmaster's going to be very good if he doesn't. Um, we'll be able to Houndmaster the Timberwolf in any way. So again, he's, he's making a lot of trades. Uh, Alley Cat's even better to Houndmaster, because we don't want to waste the Timberwolf effect. It's the same size body. I don't really think I have to um, kill command this or anything. It's it's going to be able to make good trades between this weapon and and the minion itself. We'll uh, we'll how master this one. I think it's a little bit cuter, right? So it's uh, it's going to get taunted. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't have taunted it because that's going to for sure die. <laughs> maybe I did that backwards. There's the cultist we've been worried about, and he's been holding on to his weapon for that very reason. So that's a big turn from him. It's going to be hard for us. He, he should really trade here, I think. I don't think he will. He's going to start pushing damage, but... This allows me to kill the Bloodsail Cultist a little more easily. Um, so we have... Uh, six mana. We can play this stuff out. It's, it's really probably not a great time to do it, but it's better than any other time we're going to have. Uh, it doesn't actually matter which one of these I kill command. The Houndmaster is going to hit the other one and not survive, so... Unfortunately, Houndmasters don't buff hyenas, but alley cats do, so he might want to kill this with his weapon. That's a big heal for me if it does. And by the way, this is exactly what Novice Engineer's for, is like the late game. 
I need to find an answer kind of card. Yeah, he's gonna hit it. Nice, that's good for me. Just another heal four. So we, <clears throat> we've we almost stabilized here. That's actually a great draw because it's gonna let me kill the small time buck in here, believe it or not. But let's see what we get first in case we get like a dispatch coda, which could be better. Um, Unleash the Hounds, I guess now is the best this is ever going to be, simply because um, he's never going to be drawing more than one card per turn and getting minions out, right? So I think we have to do this now. And we'll just go ahead and, and clear his board. And um, I suppose we'll play this out too. It's a little unfortunate for mana, but having four damage out could be very, very relevant. And he's not likely to have a whirlwind effect as a true pyro warrior, so. So now we're just engaging in a race, right? We're not. He he top decked something useless. He saw the writing on the wall. He knew we were going to be top decking better cards than him on average and um, had five damage out on the voidable right there. So we were going to win the race, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, that was great representation of what this deck can do against basically one of the best decks in the game right now, which is Pirate Warrior. We were able to stabilize. The Dispatch Kodo was totally clutch. I think that's a really underrated card. Uh, maybe not good enough to make Hunter itself viable, but a uh, strong card regardless. So here's another Hunter. That's an incredibly unusual sight. So we'll have to see. Um, we'll keep the Croc here. Ugh. This is almost a great play. <laughs> if we know it hits the Croc, you know, if you're able to control this since it's a random beast, if you only have one beast, you know which beast it's going to hit. So you can do cool stuff sometimes where you hit Smuggler's Crate into Kodo. And that's an awesome play, but that's a little bit slow, I think, for what we're going to face against. So I think we're just going to go for the Croc instead to make sure we have an early minion. Uh, the Smuggler's Crate on one into the Croc on two is also enticing, so maybe we'll just try for this and try to pass our turn one unless we see an Alley Cat or something. Yeah, there's the Alley Cat, so uh, that makes that decision easier. We, we definitely want to play a minion. We can slot this in any time in the future. And maybe hit the uh, Dispatch Kodo or something valuable. Definitely going to prioritize minions on the board, though, to give us that initiative so that we can make trades. That looks familiar. <clears throat> well, okay. This is an easy choice. This is four damage is going to be hard for a hunter to deal with on turn two. Um, in fact, I, I don't know. Aside of maybe Hunter's Mark Coin Quick Shot. Or Animal Companion Huffer, or, or that. God, <laughs> that's annoying. Um, hmm, is this worth it? It can do a pretty interesting play where I unleash the hounds and, and run it in, and this goes to five health, and then I can trade it, and it's a it's a um, it's an eight five, but it's actually an eight one. The question is, can he do one damage? He, and unleash the hounds would do it. There's so many ways. Quick shot. So I, I really don't think that play's worth it. I think we just go ahead and do this. Do I do I make this trade or do I just it's it's three he's already coined what can he I guess kill command yeah I have to make this trade and that might feel bad like a six four into a four four but remember that was just a two mana minion trading into a three mana minion so actually that that was a good trade for us it was an advantageous position we're likely to lose this yeah that's that's gonna be a problem for us when we get to turn six so we need to be ahead of, of the board here which I think we will be and that certainly helps. Just pushes more damage, clears his minion efficiently, because, you know, sending a 4-5 and a 3-2 doesn't feel very good. It takes us down to 2, makes us susceptible to so many things. So now he's considerably behind. Um, that's probably Freezing Trap. Cool. Yeah, Freezing Trap wasn't good, because it just hits the Dispatch Kodo and we get it back, and we can do cool stuff with it again. So, um, nice. Yeah, uh, I guess he saw the writing on the wall that we were... A fair bit ahead there and, and look to be able to push uh, an advantage. So, you know, it's it's really important that with budget decks like this, I think that you do try to play ahead. Like, you can't try to play from behind and, and swing the game because your cards are just on average going to be a slightly lower quality because they're budget cards and there's no big legendaries or no perfect deck lists. So the more you can get out ahead and, and really pressure your opponents, the better. So you really have to mulligan, I think, aggressively for that.
and, and try to think about the optimal ways you could you could make plays and, and do stuff. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself um, falling flat, I think, if you're not careful. So here, uh, we'll keep the Hyena just because this can become a really easy four attack minion, which is good against uh, Priest. There, there's a thought, perhaps, to make to keep Direwolf, but I, I really want to find like the Alley Cats or even a River Croc or something a little better. But we might whiff here. River Croc's fine. We can coin River Croc into Hyena. Unfortunately, there's very little Priest will play that will kill a River Croc. This also is an interesting dilemma, but we're going to go ahead and do this. This gives him a card, but um, sets me up a little better. <coughs> Because he can now trade and heal. This goes down to a 2-2, but I can still play the Hyena, and he doesn't really have an answer to it. Because encouraging the heal here might deny something like a Wormrest Agent, which could perhaps kill my Scavenging Hyena. So, um, there's sort of a trade-off. Now, clearly he may be able to Shadow Lord Pain or something anyway. There's, there's all kinds of options. But um, we discouraged him from playing a second minion, which threatened this more easily. So now there's a chance we get some value out of this. That doesn't really do a lot. Um, Raid Leader allows me to kill this, but leaves these two minions pretty low. Uh, we could also just kill Command this. We could also try to roll a cool minion here. Um, Huffer would be good. Really good, in fact. Because it would allow me to kill both things. Um, the 4-4 four -four Taunt would be good. Leoc even would be good. Would accomplish the same thing as Raid Leader, but with a better minion. So I, I guess we'll just go ahead and roll the Leoc here. There's no way to get this to 4 health to protect it from the future trade. So um, there's really no bad draw here. I think that's probably the worst, but it's not bad necessarily. Because it might mean this gets buffed. Four mana without the coin, there's not a lot I think Priest can do to this board. Shadow Word Pain still is a threat, but Shadow Word Death's not good. Um, second Cabal would allow him to, to make some more favorable trades, but still not really that strong. <clears throat> that's, that's not bad. He's still going to buff this, though. So Houndmaster here can probably do something very cool, can't it? <coughs> um, yeah, I can taunt. What do I want to taunt here? This is a tough decision, right? Uh, we can taunt this, but then I can't really utilize this very well. I think we'll go ahead and taunt the River Croc. Trade here. Uh, that leaves this alive again, though. Is that a problem? Might I be better off just raid leadering? Trading, trading. This would still be alive, so no. <clears throat> we could also go here, I suppose. But that that makes it a little too susceptible to um, to Shadow or Death too soon, I think. So this is slightly bad against Holy Nova, but not even really. Because these are three health, and the way this dies buffs this, so... This, he can trade here and uh, perhaps Shadow or Death this, but that takes most of his turn. And makes this susceptible to Death too. And we're able to just keep pushing damage. So the way I'm doing this right, we've taken him to 20, which is significant when we have Kill Command, 12 damage on board, Hero Power, stuff like Raid Leader. Like We're, we're threatening his face pretty substantially already. He's going to start thinking about his own health total here pretty soon. And we've just presented a, a board that's sort of a dilemma, right? What do we what do we do here? Do I kill this and buff this? That feels bad. <clears throat> Hyenas are surprisingly frustrating cards to play against, I've found. Just because they do an interesting thing that's not often encountered. It punishes you for making what are otherwise generally good plays. And there's some math to figure out too, so they can really throw opponents off. Even though often the answers aren't that hard. It just adds an extra calculation, it adds some some something they have to you know, oh, see, yeah, here's the Holy Nova. So he draws a card, but uh, this gets buffed. So he can trade here, but this is now a, another huge minion, which is nice. So we could theoretically do a lot of damage. <laughs> um, but instead, we're going to draw a card because I don't really like any of our plays here. 
I would love to see um, something good. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this is not a great line of play by any means, but we have so much damage in hand. I think we're just going to start pushing. It was a pretty weak turn, because these are sort of dead draws, right? We can't play them on turn 5, obviously. Um, they might be good soon, but if he plays any taunts, these get bad real fast. And this is still very susceptible. Maybe not to trades now. Well, susceptible to that. He should have attacked face first, but he didn't. Um, there's a halfway decent chance this lives, because <laughs> he's already Holy Noven. And use some AoE. If not, it's still 5 damage to the face and requires him to... To figure out an answer, so it's a good play regardless. Uh, that's hard to deal with for me. I don't have anything that goes to six. <laughs> I have five, five. That's it. No, no six damage spells. Shoot. Oh, that's a good draw. <laughs> that's a good draw. Um, I'm not gonna hyena. I thought about it, but the the hero power is just worth too much at this point. I played this just as a body, of course. Um, unless he runs medieval or something, which would be super weird, it's not gonna get weapon value. So, just play it out as a. That is a bit of a problem, guys. That was not in the calculations. That was not in the calculations at all. So we gotta figure something out now. Reno Dragon Priest. I like it, it's cool. Just not what we had planned. So we'll try to make this minion stick. It's, it's obviously susceptible to a lot, but what other chance do we have here? So that's why we, we killed the minion to hope that this lives somehow, because this is sort of our meal ticket, or otherwise we're just going to lose the game. Reno is crippling to us, because we're all about finishing the game with damage. Uh, that is a good answer to that. <laughs> and a secret. What did this come off of? The Cabal, I guess? Uh, so now we're in a tough, tough spot, obviously. Um, well, in case that's mere entity, let's, let's do this. Nope. Might be Vaporize? Nope. Probably uh, just Ice Block. So we have to go face at this point. I can't make trades. I have to push as much damage as possible. Ugh, what a good Dirty Rat <laughs> on the empty hands. Alright, this is going to be a pretty much unwinnable game from this position. We need to top deck really, really nicely. Wow, what a turn. Jeez. What a turn. Uh, there's there's just no way to use this. You could kill the minion right, but you have to go face and just hope that somehow you find damage, even though we've used all of our direct damage, so we're relying strictly on the hero power at this point because we'll never get through this taunt minion because all our chargers are gone. Um, so we need seven turns to kill him, essentially, and that's not considering an ice block, <laughs> assuming that's what it is. So, um, actually, more than seven because he's going to heal his face, right? And he's going to kill us well before that's ever a concern. So this is essentially a game that is unwinnable at this point. Uh, we don't have any means to draw more cards. Like, oh, here is actually technically some more direct damage, but obviously still not enough. We're, we're dead to the board. So that's what happens when you get renoed. We had a, a window there, right? One or two turns, but he had the reno. That happens. That's uh, the bane of aggro decks. You can't, uh, can't complain about that one. Had the answers. Control deck against an aggro deck. We weren't quite fast enough. <clears throat> and, and it's not like we made, you know, suboptimal trades or anything. Or, you know, going face when we could have traded to play around the Reno kind of thing. Um, he just had a couple board clears. We, we played it, I think, how we would have played it even knowing there was a Reno. So, can't complain. It's just a, a loss that happened. So, let's play uh, one more game. See how it goes. So far, we're 2-1, and one, which isn't bad at all. You know, um... With budget decks, uh, as far as win rates are concerned, uh, I certainly aim for above 50, but it's, sometimes it's going to depend on the matchup. Sometimes you got to rely on win streaks to really propel you up the ladder. Even a, even a, a deck that wins 50% of its games can can climb with win streaks, but this should, should win more in the long run. 
So here, I mean, Mulligan's pretty obvious. I don't know what kind of deck this is. Nobody's playing Paladin right now. It probably has something to do with hand buffs, if I had to guess. Some sort of Grimy Goons, maybe a Murlocs. I, I really don't know, so we'll just play our game. Worry about what we see when we, when we see it, right? As far as Mulligans are concerned, we, we are proactively mulliganing for ourselves, not for tech answers or anything, so it usually doesn't matter too much unless there's some sort of specific card in the early game you're trying to address. Maybe this is a pirate uh, paladin. I haven't seen that yet, but it, I don't know why it doesn't work. They have early game weapons. It seems like a decent uh, potential deck. So we're onto a small, uh, a, a nice early game curve. Uh, Raid Leader is really probably one of the weakest cards in this list. Just works so nicely with Unleash and, and boards like this. It's going to allow me to kill this uh, Doomsayer because you know we're going to have three, five, seven. So. Um, <laughs> about as good as it gets. Um, he can still coin Consecration, but that does leave me with at least one minion for Houndmaster, so it's great. It's a great play, but um, not the greatest play, just because of the way our board works. So now he can maybe True Silver this. I don't know. He takes some damage, though, to do that. This is a nice combo always, but I doubt he's going to play... Oh, maybe he will play a lot of minions. Who knows? Gosh, I think I might... Oh, man, do I want to do this yet? No, not yet, because... Because um, they, uh, they don't trade very well, right? This is three total health. Um, gosh, I might just go face. You can do 10, 12... Maybe something like this, actually. Just throw the hyena out as a sort of, um... Sort of bait. Because this is going to die first 99% of the time. Let's see what we get from the tracking, too, since we have the mana. Uh, we want damage, or... This doesn't do anything right now. Hounds... I don't know, probably is going to get good. But Timberwolf we know is good with Hounds, so I'm just going to go ahead and take the Timberwolf, believe it or not, since we already have one Hounds. So uh, he can kill this, but that makes this better. Becomes a um, five. Oh, goodness. He can kill both now. Oh, he can't. Oh, yeah, he still can. This is two attacking. Yeah, cool. It's a good play for him. But again, we still have tons of, just tons of damage. Uh, I don't even mind that so much, just the way it... Yeah, let's just go face. <laughs> he still has a lot to kill. I like this play. Really applies pressure. He's got mostly minions in hand, or maybe not mostly, but at least half minions in hand, so... Oh, that could be good. He's gonna go for the heal, no matter what the card is, so... Unless he got three secrets. Uh, he healed three, so... Uh, that's probably like Divine Favor or something, but it's... Is it enough? Let's see. Not anymore. No, that's uh, guaranteed lethal, so... Cool. Nice. Yeah, he had like a hand buff control deck. I haven't seen that a lot, but... Yeah, it seemed, seemed decent, maybe. We just uh, overwhelmed. As our deck is wont to do. We were able to answer that Doomsayer, which was really clutch. Uh, his, his Consecration fell just a little flat, which was really clutch. So, between those two things... Uh, we were just able to pull ahead. So let me find the deck here. And uh, this, yeah, this is the Budget Aggro Hunter. So as you saw, uh, three really quick wins. And that's one great thing about this deck is the games tend to be pretty fast. Whether you win super fast or you lose even faster, uh, you're going to climb the ladder pretty quickly with this kind of deck. So it's an ideal pace uh, for jumping out onto the ranked ladder as well. So I like this deck a lot. Like I said, it does really neat things. It has ways to win games in multiple angles which I think is always important on the ladder. And it actually can just win games instead of the kind of deck that just bleeds people out. This decisively wins, which is always fantastic too. So uh, 600 Arcane Dust, neat little deck, has some cool gadgets and cards. Give this thing a shot. I think if you want to play Hunter, which nobody is doing right now, that you'll enjoy this list. Uh, all that said, if you have any thoughts, comments, questions on this deck, you know where to leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer and address as much as I can. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, game on.